So from a subscriber request, let's do an example to solve for the hydrostatic force that acts on a slanted surface that's submerged. So we know here we have a 5 meter long by 1 meter wide slanted gate and has a hinge at point O as shown by the figure below. So what we have is a gate down here that's submerged below a top water surface and it's 5 meters long and the width into the page is 1 meter. And we have a hinge at O in this particular case. And we're told the fluid on the left side of the gate has a density of 1,500 kilogram per meter to the third. So this is the density for the fluid on this side. And based on this case, we want to look at the hydrostatic force in kilonewtons required to keep the gate closed is most nearly what? So we know this side will have the fluid. It has this density and it the fluid always distributes some pressure. So we have a distribution of pressure and what we want to find is the force. So we want to relate that pressure to a force and that's what we're finding here in kilonewtons, the hydrostatic force due to the fluid and at the bottom we will also solve this and find the location of this force for that slanted gate. So the first thing I recommend we do is draw the pressure distribution. And we know in the handbook, this is also provided in the new FE handbook. They drew the pressure distribution for us. And from this pressure distribution, we can find the force. So let's draw this pressure distribution. And it would look something like this. We know the pressure is always perpendicular to the surface we're looking at. And in this case, it's the gate. So this is our pressure distribution. So from this pressure distribution, we want to find a resultant force. And I'll use blue for that. And let's say it acts somewhere here. This is what we want to find. The hydrostatic resultant force in units of kilonewtons. So based on that, we know that we can develop two basic shapes if we choose to. But that's the more complicated approach. So that approach is more complicated when you're looking at these slanted gates. So what I recommend for the FE is make use of the equations in the handbook. So it's under fluid mechanics. It's under the forces on submerged surfaces and center of pressure. The major equation you have to know is the hydrostatic resultant force equation. So let's write that down. So the hydrostatic resultant force equation, which is what we want to find, FR equals to it says we take the density times g times yc so we take the density times g times yc and then we do the sine of theta and all of this times the area so we know that let's look at what we have and what we don't have we have the density which is the fluid density right that's 1,500. We know G is 9.81 in SI. YC, we do not know. We do not know theta, and we know the area. We know the area because it's just the 5 meter by the 1 meter wide gate. So we're looking at it in 3D. So we're looking at it into the page. So let's say this is our gate. We want to look at it into the page. And we're considering this gate, right? We have something that looks like this. And we know this distance is essentially like the height, right? It's the length, which is the height if we look at it from that view. So it's going to be the 5 meters. And this distance, where we are told into the page is 1 meter wide. It's essentially the base. So you want to look at it in that view when you're doing the area. So the area is the cross-sectional area, and we know that's where the pressure is going to act, the pressure distribution, right? Let me use red as I denote it in the figure. So that's what we have. This is the pressure distribution. And what we want to do is find the resultant force, FR. So that's just the 3D view of that gate, the slanted gate. So we know we need YC and theta though. The area we can find is just 5 by 1, right? So let's first find theta real quick. So theta is going to be this angle, right? So it's that angle and that's what's denoted in the figure in the handbook. They denote the angle 
here, so it's similar to this angle, we know this angle is the same as this angle. So that's your theta, always. It's the angle with respect to the horizontal up to the slanted gate. This is the horizontal, and we move this angle to the slanted gate. Or if you look at it from this view, this is the horizontal, we move this way at this angle to the slanted gate. So that's theta, and we can find theta by doing what rule? So we know Sokotoa, which one can we use? So, because we have the opposite and we have the hypotenuse, right? So we do the Sokotoa, which says, let me denote that, it says sine of theta equals the opposite over hypotenuse. So we do sine of theta. What's the opposite it is four meters, right? The opposite is this side, so it's four meters. The hypotenuse is this, so it's five meters. And you can do sine inverse now, so theta equals sine inverse in the calculator of four meters over five meters. So we can find theta, and I believe you should get, let's see, 53.13 degrees. So we have the angle theta. We need that in order to plug it in this equation. Now let's find yc. So yc is the tricky part. So y always for slanted surfaces is from the very top water surface and it will be a slanted angle. It's not a vertical, it's not a vertical distance, it's a slanted distance. So it's going to be parallel to the gate. Always remember y is parallel to the gate. So we know in this particular case, so let's see, I draw this line all the way to the top surface, right? I want to match the top surface. So that's my line here. So this is the top surface, right? We always start at the top, at the top. So y is going to be the distance, yc is going to be from that distance to the centroid of the gate. So the dead center of the gate. The centroid of the gate, it's just at the center, right? So in the last slanted gate example on that I, I uploaded, the top surface was just here, right? It made it easier. But here, our top water surface is at the very top. So we have to account for this entire distance from the top to the centroid. So we know here, I'll denote it by this color, actually green, YC is going to go to the centroid of the gate. So the centroid is somewhere here of the gate. And we start at the very top and go all the way to the centroid. And that's what we need to find. That's what we're finding and that's going to be our YC. So that's what we need to find in order to finally solve this equation. But in, we know in the handbook that it makes it easy for us. They just give us the equation. So YC is going to be HC divided by sine of theta and we know theta right we just found that so we can easily solve for yc and let me denote that with green that's the yc we want to solve for and plug it in here we just take hc divided by sine theta and we know hc is always vertical it's strictly vertical from the top water surface so what we have to do for hc is start at the top and go strictly vertically downwards to the centroid that's what we denote by c this is hc so we know hc can be easily found right we just take the eight and take the four divided by two four divided by two is what two we take eight plus two once again we take this distance which is eight right then we add this distance to the centroid, which is four divided by two, right? So the total HC is eight, this distance, plus this distance, which is four divided by two, which is two meters. So HC is 10 meters. So let's denote that. We can say in the equation, we take the eight meters plus four meters divided by two. Then we do sine of theta, and we know theta is 53.13 degrees. 
So now we can solve for YC. And you should get 12.5 meters. So we just found YC. Basically, what they did is, a, is trig, right? All they did was use trig, use the trig rules, and use the sine, the SOKATOA, right? They use sine of opposite over hypotenuse. Then they rearrange that and solve for YC. That's all that was done because we have a triangle, right? This is the triangle that we're focusing on, right? And we just found YC by doing SOKATOA. We just found this and since we know HC. So that's where that comes from. We found YC. Finally, we can find the hydrostatic force because we have YC and we have the angle. We can find the area easily by doing base times height. So we know FR. We take the road, the density is 1,500 kilogram per meter to the third. Then you multiply by 9.81 meter per second squared. And you take YC, which is this, 12.5. 12.5 meters. Then you do sine of theta. So this is a S, sine of theta. We know theta is 53.13 degrees. Then close parenthesis all of this, multiply it by the area. So the area is into the page, right? You want to look at it from this view. So it's just base times height, one times five meters. So you take one meter times five meters. So then we can solve for the resultant force. And for that, you should get about 736 kilonewtons. So here, the output will be newtons. You divide by 1,000 to get kilonewtons, and we get approximately 736 kilonewtons. So this is the answer for this portion, 736. Once again, I just used the equation in the handbook. I didn't want to complicate it here. I know some people can use, they use volumes. You can take in, take account for the volume and just add up all the volumes, shapes of volumes. There's also other methods to solve this, but I want to make it simple and just use the equation in the handbook for slanted surfaces. So we have that, and the last step is the location of this hydrostatic force. So we know in the handbook, if you look at the figure carefully, it says that we have a centroid and we have a center of pressure. The force always acts at the center of pressure. It's slightly below the centroid, always. The force always acts at the center of pressure. So it doesn't act at the centroid, it acts somewhere here at the center of pressure. So let's call it CP. It acts at the center of pressure. It's below the centroid. And that's denoted in the figure in the handbook. So let's find that distance and it's going to be YCP. There's an equation for that in the handbook. So the equation is YCP, the distance to the center of pressure, is going to equal to the YC, which we did find in green, right? YC we have, then we do plus the IX about the centroid. It's the moment of inertia about the centroid for this basic shape. Here it's just a rectangle, right? So that's going to be that and then we take yc on the bottom yc this is the same as this then we multiply by the area for that shape the rectangle so we know this we know this we solved it from the last question and ixc is going to be simply what so you should know this for simple shapes if you don't try to memorize this equation all you do is base times height to the third divided by 12 about the centroid. This is under the static section for those basic shapes. So in this case, we take the base. What's the base? We know based on the width is one meter, the height is five meters. So we take one meter times five meters to the third divided by 12. Then we know I x about the centroid will give us about, so it should be units meter to the fourth and I got 10.42. 
meter to the fourth. So we have that. All we do pl is plug it here and solve for YCP, that distance. YCP equals YC, we said is 12.5 as we determined above, plus we take this, which is this, 10.42 meter to the fourth it's the moment of inertia about the centroid we take yc the same as this 12.5 meters and you multiply by the area in this case it's just one meter times five meters so then we can solve for that answer and we should get 12.67 meters so this is the distance where this force actually acts from that that slanted distance from the top water surface so it should be C and we can tell that this is below the YC because we said that YC is 12.5 this is slightly below that right it's 12.67 so it makes sense the final answer does make sense and I think that's all for this video. Thank you.